the next step is really to educate ourselves. Before we try to educate other people, we need to educate ourselves, become familiar with the facts, we have to know what we're talking about. We can then educate the public, we can educate our MPs, MEPs. Legislation, well, this refers to legal challenges. We have to probe, we have to find the weak spots in the system, either by taking on tackling a specific animal experiment, which is particularly cruel or particularly unscientific, which is easy to hit, or go for the big time, which is a, a judicial inquiry. In other words, ask the government to launch a judicial inquiry into the questionable scientific validity of animal experiments in medical research. These together will influence public opinion. And we need public opinion, because although public opinion is not the only thing required to change all of this, but it is the one thing without which change will not happen. So we, we need public opinion. And it's not easy to that. It's getting harder and harder. Because the BBC doesn't want to listen to people who are scientific and vivisectionists. They're really censoring us. But we have to find ways around that. And this, this meeting, for example, is one way around that. Because as far as I know, nobody's censoring me here. Remember, the bigger the audience, the simpler the message. So in other words, if you're going to be interviewed on radio or TV, you have to consider the lowest common denominator. In other words, people who are not very intellectual make your message simple. If you're talking one-on-one, -on -one, you can get as involved as you like. And last but not least, have faith. Thank you. Any questions? Do you think that the public are registering? Do you think a lot of people, more and more people, are becoming anti animal experiments? Um, let, let me give you a concrete example where things are getting better. Uh, there are more and more medical schools where you do not have to perform animal experiments in order to qualify, in order to graduate. And that's good news because these medical schools are pushing out generations of medical doctors who haven't touched animal experiments, which means that, first of all, you can become a doctor, a medical doctor, without performing animal experiments. Surprise, surprise. Secondly, it means that when these people become instructors, they will not resort to animal experiments because they've been taught to do all these medical procedures without using animal experiments. So, just in education alone, which is very, very important, there are very, very strong indicators that animal experimentation is being pushed out of the syllabus, out of the medical syllabus. So that, that already is a very, very strong indicator. Uh, second of all, there are more and more scientists and scientific anti section groups around today, which were not around 10 or 20 years ago. Um, you can only fool all the people for so much of the time. And I think the pharmaceutical industry has just shot itself in the foot by yeah. raising the profile of the issue of the ethics of testing drugs on children. Because this is now a very, very um, important debate in the United States. Okay, people want to test, the, the pharmaceutical companies, okay, they don't really want to test on children because it's an ethical minefield. It's a nasty. And also children are not really, the, the, the children market is not profitable because children don't take nearly as many drugs as older people. Children are normally healthy. So it's not really a lucrative sort of market. But um, since 80% of drugs have not been tested on children for efficacy or safety, the FDA, and I'm sure at some stage the CSN and the UK authorities will say, hold on, uh, we can't have this situation going on anymore, where the doctor who prescribes these drugs for children is taking the responsibility on his shoulders if heaven forbid something should go wrong with that child. They can't even point a finger at the pharmaceutical industry because they can say it's the doctor that gave a prescription on his own bet. So, yes? Well, it is in about, let's say, 10 years from now, there will be less than 10, a million animal experiments. Uh, the, point, the point is to expose animal experimentation for what it is. It's irrelevant, it's dangerous, it's bad for your health. Um, as I say, the combination of this expose of wanting to test drugs on children, on healthy children, with all the ethical problems, that is bringing, bringing things to the fore. Plus, um, what I discussed 
before we saw about um, how all how very different this crowd is. Okay, so if people are so different, uh, it's time to treat people as individuals. Hence, personalized medicine or individualized medicine. And hopefully, the day is not too far away where you will go to your doctor and give him your magnetic card, and he'll put it through the machine, and he'll have your, your whole DNA genome on his screen, and he'll know exactly what you're allergic to, how fast your liver works, how slow your kidneys work, etc., etc., etc. He will prescribe tailor-made drug for you. Now, that's a problem also for the pharmaceutical industry because it's not as profitable as just mass-producing pills for everybody and giving everybody the same dose. So, all these things are coming to the fore. It's good that, that we are becoming aware of this because this, this is the name of the game. This is what's going to happen. And is the, the, the powers that be can only cover up so long. They can only cover up so long. But, but folks, the truth is out there. And it's, it's a question of time. And it's up to us to speed things up rather than just sit back and wait and, and let somebody else do it. It's, it's, it is us that have to move if we want to heal the world. Because the world, my friends, is, is in a pit of a mess of the moment. Yes, madam.